All right. So uh, again, one of the things that uh, during this class is that sometimes I teach uh, using a presentation like I did today uh, earlier with the orientation. And a lot of times what I do is uh, I do this kind of uh, presentation where I use my whiteboard. So that's what I'm going to start off with today because uh, we're going to talk about something called vectors. Hopefully you had some experience with those in 3U. Uh, but again, 2020, I'm not sure what you covered and who you had. All right, so uh, what we're going to look at, because this is important for uh, this unit, is scalars and vectors and what the difference is. So a scalar is a quantity. Now, a quantity in math and science, or I guess in science, is anything you can count. Quality is anything you can describe. Quantity is anything you can count. So a scalar is anything you can count, a quantity that is represented by its magnitude only, which means just its size. So examples of a scalar, uh, you're measuring mass, where you have five kilograms, time, you have 10 minutes, uh, length, you have 90 centimeters, all right? You're just talking about something you can count, length, time, uh, mass. What we're interested in today is something called a vector. Now, a vector is a quantity, again, something you can count, that is represented by magnitude and direction. Two things, two parts to it, size and direction. All right, so for example, if you're traveling, you could say that I went 50 kilometers north, or you could have something where you have 20 kilometers an hour, 20 degrees north of west. Again, we're gonna, I'm gonna explain what that means. Now, example one here uh, is that we're going to draw the vector 50 kilometers an hour, 30 degrees south of west. All right, we're going to draw it now. Here is something that typically happens in physics that we cannot do virtually, and that is what's called a vector scale diagram. All right, so we're not going to be doing vector scale diagrams because I can't check your scale. That's something you have to do in real life, uh, you know, face to face. But we are going to work with vectors algebraically, which means a lot of trigonometry is going to happen. Now, I can still draw this vector, and we're going to need to draw this vector to find out information about the vector that we're going to use uh, to both represent a vector and to add subtract vectors. Now, 50 kilometers an hour, 30 degrees south of west. The first thing you have to deal with with a vector is the direction, all right? And so what I have here in red is what's called a compass rose. And so what I'm going to represent uh, with our directions is northeast, southwest on my compass rose. Now, here's how I remember it is that north is always on the top, right? I think most of us know that when we look at maps, if you've ever looked at a map. Uh, and then what I do is I go around where I use the phrase, never enter stinky washrooms, kind of a rule I live by. All right, so I have north, east, south, west, never enter stinky washrooms. All right, so now I've got my compass rose labeled properly. But now I have to look at this angle here, 30 degrees south of west. What that is trying to say is, or it is saying, we just have to know what it's saying, is 30 degrees towards the south from west. All right, so 30 degrees uh, towards the south from the west. So that means that we're starting on the west direction and we are going to move 30 degrees towards the south. So I'm going to draw a line so I know my vector is going to be in this quadrant here. So because it's a diagram, it doesn't matter. There we go. And again, 30 degrees towards the south. So I started at west and I'm moving 30 degrees towards the south. So that's where my angle would go right there. My magnitude, the size of my, of my vector is 50 kilometers an hour. So that is me drawing a representation of my vector, not a vector scale diagram, because I'm not doing those, but it is me drawing a, a vector diagram to represent this particular vector. And again, sometimes, or a lot of times, vectors, we label them, and so I could call this vector V. And so I have a V, and to, to show that it's a vector, I put an arrow over it to say again that it is a vector, that it has size and magnitude. 
All right, so that is us drawing a vector. All right, so there's our, well, we're going to work on a little bit more than that. And again, if you have a question, please pipe up. Uh, I can't use the chat because right now I'm using my cell phone and your chat, the, the words are just too small. Like there is, happens to be a question. All right, so the next thing, not only are we going to draw vectors, we're going to look at their parts. All right, so uh, example one, or I guess that's example two because I just had a example one, is uh, determine... Uh, the horizontal and vertical components of a vector V here. So I put a little arrow above that V, and uh, I'm going to go with that same vector we just had there, 50 kilometers an hour, uh, 30 degrees south of west. All right, so again, I'm going to do what's called find the vertical and horizontal components. So once again, I'm going to draw my vector, all right? So here's my vector. We're going to put a right, let's put a right in the middle here. Again, I want to label my compass rows appropriately. Never enter stinky washrooms. So I got N, ever enter stinky washrooms. All right. So once again, like I said, I'm going to draw my vector in there. And so uh, I know it's in this quadrant between west and south. So I just draw a representation there of it. And it is 50, has a magnitude of 50. And again, it's... 30 degrees south of west, so we start at the west, and you move 30 degrees. All right, so that's just me, again, redrawing my vector. Now, what we're looking at when we're talking about the horizontal and vertical components is that when we draw our compass rows, west and east are consider our horizontal, our left and right components. North and south, because they're up and down on our compass rows, are considered our vertical components, up and down. All right, and so what we can look at is I'm going to break this vector up and find out how much, I guess in this case, left it goes. And so I'm going to call that vertical, and that's called our horizontal component of our vector. And so it's labeled VH with a little arrow. So that is the horizontal component. That is how much left our vector goes. Could go right or left, but in this case it goes left because it goes to the west. All right, now the vertical component is how much up or down this purple vector goes, our V vector. And in this case, it's headed towards the south, so it's headed down. And so this green arrow that I have there is our vertical component of our vector, which I would call V, R, R, V, V, V little V, the vertical component of vector V. All right, so now how do I find those? Well, what I have here is a right angle triangle between my blue line, green line, and my purple line. And I do know that there's a 90 degree angle in here because, well, that's the definition of horizontal and vertical. They're at a 90 degree to each other. So what I'm going to do is first find my horizontal component, the VH. And what I'm going to use is trigonometry because I have a right angle triangle. And in this case, I know the hypotenuse has a size, a magnitude of 50. And what I want is this other side, this VH side. So this side, according to the angle, again, you got to know your trigonometry, is the adjacent. Uh, this 50 degree side is my hypotenuse. So when I have the adjacent and the hypotenuse, I'm going to use the cos cosine ratio. And so I, and my angle here is 30 degrees. So I have cos of 30 degrees. Again, my adjacent is VH, all right, my horizontal component of my vector, and the hypotenuse is 50. Now, there's something a little bit different that I wrote there. You will notice that VH here, I didn't put an arrow above it. 
because all I'm trying to do is find the size of it. I know the direction. It's headed to the west. That's why I got to know how to draw these vectors. If it's heading to the west, I know the direction. I just got to find out the size of it. So again, I use a little trigonometry here. So uh, let's see here. Uh, 12 U, so cos 30. Again, you got to have my calculator in degree mode. Make sure you, <laughs> we do that. Otherwise, you can type all the right buttons, get all the wrong answers. Uh, cos 30 degrees is rounded into two decimal places of 0.87 is equal to VH divided by 50. All right, I always like to do a fraction equaling a fraction. So uh, 1 times VH is VH. All right, and then 0.87 times 50 will be the magnitude of my uh, vector here. So I get 43.5. And we're talking about kilometers an hour here. But again, I want the horizontal component of my vector. So I'm going to now rewrite this, VH. I'm going to throw my little vector symbol above it, the arrow that's stating that it's a vector, which means, again, has magnitude and uh, magnitude and direction. So there's my magnitude there. It's still at 43.5 kilometers an hour. And again, because of my diagram, I know the direction. It's headed west. There's one down. That is the horizontal component. That is how much left, or in this west in this case, that this vector is moving. Now I'm going to find the vertical component, which is how much up or down. Well, in this case, it's down. All right, so I go over here again using some trigonometry. So I'm going to find the vertical component of vector V. All right, now that green line is my opposite in my triangle. And again, I have 50 there, which is my hypotenuse. So the opposite in the hypotenuse, I'm going to use the sine trig ratio. And my angle, again, is still 30 degrees there. And again, the opposite, VV, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 50. All right, now, again, uh, I'm going to solve and find my magnitude there. So uh, let's see here. Sine of 30 degrees is 0.5. And then, of course, the other side there is VV, divided by 50. Again, I'm going to create a fraction equaling a fraction. So 1 times VV is VV, uh, 0.5 times 50. Well, half times 50, I don't need a calculator, it's 25. But again, I'm looking for the vertical component of this vector. Again, I gotta illustrate it, it's 25. I'm gonna throw some units in there, it's kilometers per hour. And because it's a vector now, now I'm adding in direction. Again, I look at my diagram here, it's moving south. The best part about horizontal and vertical components, you're always going to be either north, east, south, west, because it's either up or down, left or right. And so there is the horizontal component of my vector, and there is the vertical component of my vector. Any questions so far? All right. I'm going to do one more of those, a little bit differently, though, but uh, same idea. Uh, let's see here. Let's uh, get rid of this. Move it up in there. All right, so uh, let's see, get rid of example two. I'm gonna do the same thing here for example three. All right, and here's our vector. I'm gonna call it vector W. All right, so it's got a W with an arrow over top. Again, the arrow's telling you it's a vector. And uh, let's go with 40 kilometers, and I'm gonna go north 24 degrees east. All right, so there's my vector. Looks a little bit differently in terms of the direction because this textbook tends to flip back and forth on how it illustrates direction. So I want you to be able to work with both. All right, now, so we have our vector is W, 40 kilometers north, 24 degrees east. All right, so the first thing I am going to do again is draw my vector. And I have to label my compass rows appropriately. So I have never 
Enter stinky washrooms. All right, now, how do I illustrate this vector? Well, north 24 degrees east means you start at north, then move 24 degrees towards east. So start north, and then go 24 degrees towards the east. So it is a little bit different. All right, so it's a little bit different. All right, so our vector, if I draw it in, I know it's going to be in the northeast quadrant. So uh, just as a diagram, I, there's my vector. Now the 24 degrees, again, start at north. 24 degrees is going to be right in there. All right, so now when I'm looking for my vertical and horizontal components, I can see how much my vector in this case is going to move up. So there we go. I'm going to call that. This is the vertical component of our W vector. So I'll put a W with a little subscript V. And then my green line here, I go over. And that will be my horizontal component, which will be the vector W with a little subscript H. And again, the magnitude of my original vector here is 40. There we go. So again, drawing the diagram so that when I do my trigonometry, everything works out and I got everything in the right spot, especially your angle. All right, so I got my right angle triangle here. All right, so now I'm going to, again, uh, I'm gonna find the vertical component first. So let's find W. V. All right, so let's see here. What do I got? Uh, this time the 24 degree angle is adjacent to that. And again, we have the hypotenuse, which is our vector. The magnitude is 40. And so if I have the adjacent, I'm going to use cosine. And it looks as if it's 24 degree angle that I've got. My adjacent is my WV. Again, I didn't put a vector symbol over there because I just want to know the magnitude because I know the direction by looking at the diagram and the uh, hypotenuse here is 40. All right. So again, make sure I got my calculator in degree mode, which is important. I hit coast 24 and I get 0.91 to two decimal places. All right. There's my WV there divided by 40. Again, I'm going to do a fraction equaling a fraction, a little trick of mine. So that I can uh, cross multiply. So one times WV is WV. 0.91 times 40 is 36.4. And again, I'm going to write it finally as a vector. So there's my symbol. It is 36.4. My units are kilometers. And because I'm talking about a vector, I need the direction and I look at my diagram here, vertically it is moving up, which is north. All right, so there's my vertical component. Next up, we get to the horizontal component. How much to the left or right? Well, in this case, it looks like it's going to the right. It's gonna go east. It's already know my direction's east. Now it's finding the magnitude uh, from this 24 degree angle. That green line, which is our horizontal component, is the opposite. So I'm going to use sine. So I'm going to have sine 24 degrees equals our opposite, which is WH, all over our hypotenuse, which is 40. There we go. All right. So like I did before, I'm going to find sine 24, which is a 0.41 equals WH over 40. All right, again, I want to solve for WH. Fraction equaling a fraction. So one times WH is WH. 0.41 times 40. 0.41 times 40. I get 16.4. So I got the magnitude. So now I can finally write the horizontal component as a vector. I got WH. Yeah, I'm writing as a vector. So there's my arrow over top. The magnitude is 16.4. Make sure I get my units in there, which is kilometers. And again, my direction determined by my, 
by my diagram here, that horizontal component is headed east. And so there it is. There it is my vertical and my horizontal components of my vector. Again, you got to watch out for the direction. Typically will be uh, displayed two ways. There's generally two ways to do it. I haven't seen a third way, but I'm sure there is. Uh, but that is breaking our vectors up into horizontal and vertical components. Now,